Hi and welcome. My name is Peter Ulander. I am the Director of Solutions Marketing here at AWS. Um, I'd like to thank you for joining my talk today to learn a little bit about modern compute as you start moving into the cloud. Containers and serverless are fast becoming the standard for how customers are developing with cloud native principles, but there are still some considerations that have to be had in, in getting to the right choice. And I look forward to sharing some of those thoughts, suggestions, examples, and hopefully inspire you to take these learnings with you as you go home and think through your own modernization effort in your business. So real quick, what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit about why customers are choosing AWS as their destination for their cloud journey. We'll get clear on what choices you have when you're thinking about cloud native applications, and then we'll go a little bit deeper on containers and serverless and what they mean and how you can choose. And then realistically, we'll bring it home with some customer examples because it's always easier to understand how others have gone before you. But let's start with the the let, let, let's start at the top right um for most of you, you you have to decide what camp are you in from an it perspective is it a strategic weapon that you pour plenty of investment into or is it a cost center um the reality is unless you're netflix facebook or someone like twitter um your IT investments probably looked at more like a cost center. And don't feel bad, about 99.5% of the world looks at it that way. So when we come to that realization, the best question to ask is, how much do you want to manage yourself? Um, Gartner at one point, they talked about the fact that 80% of IT spend is focused on run the business operations, versus, while 20% was focused on innovation. The fastest way to improve that ratio and bias towards spending your money on innovation and things that make you unique in the market is to remove the un undifferentiated heavy lifting and give it over to someone else. Effectively, let's stop managing infrastructure. It's not a one size fits all, but modernization brings huge opportunities that help you optimize for growth. Now, what does it mean abstracting away the infrastructure pain? When it comes to managing infrastructure, this is one of the biggest costs in your budget where you can optimize and find better efficiencies as you move to the cloud, right? Cloud computing, and specifically AWS, is the answer to how you can start managing less. Um, from the earliest days, AWS, one of our goals has been to take care of the undifferentiated heavy lifting, and that means managing servers, storage, networking, operating systems, all of this time-consuming cost sink so that our customers can focus more on innovation. And what we've done in abstracting that infrastructure management away is we've also added in an API or a programming interface that enables your developers to manage that um, infrastructure as code, enabling you to move even faster. And as infrastructure evolves or as services evolve, we find new ways of abstraction to help you move faster, right? So the reality is that undifferentiated heavy lifting drives little to no value for your business or for your environment and for your customers. And we work hard to eliminate that cost in your system. But it's not just about the cost of hardware, software, real estate, etc. There are many opportunities that are bringing customers to AWS. Sure, cost reduction and better scale and consolidation of data centers are huge drivers for most customers that have come to AWS. But AWS also brings better agility and speed. We talk about the, the API, that, that programming interface. It enables you to automate everything, right? You'll also gain access to just a ton of different types of innovation from IoT to machine learning, et cetera, all now accessible without having to think about what the costs of upgrading your hardware are. And then, you know, at the end of the day, our global footprint enables you to quickly scale and reach all of the customers around the world. This is the foundation for digital transformation. It is about automation. It is about creating new experiences, increasing business reach, and staying ahead of competitors. And AWS has helped thousands of the world's largest and smallest customers do exactly this. So hopefully by now, 
and the reason you're here, you're in. Tell me a little bit about what you need to be thinking about driving that better optimization within your environment and taking that step of moving towards AWS. We actually look at it in three buckets, right? First one, reduce the do-it-yourself stuff for things that are available as SaaS. There are so many things um, that can bring the Salesforce effect into IT. Uh, that is, unless, of course, you like managing software licenses and hardware refreshes and you know things that, that bog down your overall system. Um, the second part is around migration, lift and shift. I actually joke a little bit. This is the DOS 2.0 strategy, where DOS stands for don't own stuff, right? Don't own stuff that isn't materially helping you grow your business. And AWS is migration simplified, enabling you to lift and shift your applications into AWS with minimal disruption, with minimal downtime, all while getting you those benefits of cost and scale and innovation. And finally, when you're here, it's about modernizing your applications, modernizing your overall IT, future-proofing your IT, if you will, with new innovations and tools and capabilities that help you move faster. It's the path to getting to where IT does become a strategic weapon for you while reducing your overall cost footprint. I can speak for hours on the first two, but the reality is there's probably plenty sessions here at Summit that'll go into things like our SaaS strategy and what you can do with regards to migration. Today, we're going to talk about that modernization and what are the things you need to be thinking about as you take that next step towards building cloud native applications. Candidly, it's one of the easier, more fun conversations to have because it is truly about moving faster, innovating faster, and disrupting your space by delivering more value to your customers. And the first choice you have to make in that journey really comes down to compute. What's the server environment that you're going to launch your new applications on? So let's start there. At AWS, we tend to talk about compute in three buckets. There's instances which are the traditional way of thinking when it comes to infrastructure. It's about the closest thing to uh, a classic data center architecture where you're going to choose your server size, the type of networking, the type of storage, and all of the other things around it in order to run. Right. The second thing, which has quickly become one of the fastest growing environments for most businesses today, is the concept of containers. Right. These, in many ways, are smaller, portable, easier to manage chunks of compute, similar to VMs, but smaller and more manageable and kind of, you know, decoupled services and systems. This helps you move faster from an IT perspective. And then finally, we'll talk about serverless, which ultimately is the highest level of abstraction away from the infrastructure. You don't worry about that infrastructure. You worry only about your, your code. Now, we're certainly known for EC2 instances. That was where we started 15 years ago, and many customers continue to use that. But increasingly, customers are telling AWS that they, they want to manage less. So today, let's focus on the other parts of this, not the EC2 part, but on the things like containers with EKS and ECS. And even better, we'll talk a little bit about Lambda and what this whole serverless revolution looks like. But it's important to start with the fact that there are no wrong choices here. In many of the most important ways, ECS, EKS, and Lambda give you the same benefits really focused in on that abstraction and helping you move faster. All three are fully managed by AWS, so you don't have to worry about owning and managing the infrastructure. We'll take care of that for you. All three services have deep integration with AWS. That means you get access to our automation, our deployment services, networking, storage, security, observability, as well as that innovation we talked about when we start extending out into data analytics and, and machine learning. All three have a huge ecosystem behind them from software vendors like Docker, Terraform, Datadog, to resellers and integrators that can help you move quickly within your own projects. And all three support a broad range of use cases and workloads. So regardless of which one you choose, you're already off to a good start in building a cloud native application with AWS. But there are some distinct differences and nuances that you need to be aware of when you start heading down this path. First, Lambda, this is event-oriented. This means that the compute itself sits idle, ready by your side until an event is triggered and the system has to jump into action. Once that event is triggered, resources are spun up and down to meet the need of the job. 
at millisecond speed. There's no need to worry about that infrastructure provisioning, configuration, or capacity. You literally pay only for what you want to pay for. For customers, this means Lambda becomes the fastest time to production with the lowest possible TCO. Bring your idea and your code and move. This is in many ways why customers will start choosing Lambda for a lot of their applications. But the reality is there's also containers and many customers are already heading down that path. And you know, containers are compute oriented. This means it has similar constructs to a physical server or VM. It gives you more capability around configuration and managing some of that infrastructure. It's just easier than a classic VM. What makes it different and what allows is the fact that containers allows customers to turn monolithic applications into modular, portable, and composable services. Again, speed and innovation being core, simplicity of infrastructure management being one of the big benefits. This is why customers are choosing containers today. Unlike serverless, containers will give you options to define and pick the resource types. You do have to have some infrastructure knowledge and requirements as you head down a container path. Um, and many customers feel that that control, that level of control and configuration is super important for their business. While you still only pay for what you use, containers is instance-based and Lambda is request-based. So the cheat sheet for me, Lambda, bring your code, forget about the infrastructure. Containers, bring your app and choose an infrastructure environment that's a lot easier to manage than a classic server model. But here's the key, right? It's not really a choice of containers or serverless. Most customers are using both. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about success, uh, successes that some of our customers have seen as, as, as they've head, head down this path in managing both types of environments, right? And it starts with the fact that there, there's a lot of common use cases. So what are customers actually building with containers and Lambda that we see? Customers building a wide variety of applications, but there are a few common areas where they tend to see huge benefits as they step down a, a cloud native path. First off, it's very easy to use either containers or Lambda to automate basic IT tasks. This is a great way to get started where you're dealing with production applications that might be running on EC2, and you can use things like Lambda functions to validate configurations each time that instance is launched, right? fast way to start getting uh, down the path of realizing the benefits and the experience of using these cloud native platforms. Next, customers are building data processing applications. Super common, why? Because as you get your data into the cloud, one of the big benefits, especially with all of our data and analytics tools, is the ability to get better insights out of the data that you now have hosted inside of AWS. And the best way to build these things for your data processing is by leveraging cloud native technologies like containers and Lambda. And then as they expand, as, as you, you look to move from operational efficiencies and into applications that are going into production, um, uh, we start to see multiple teams building whole microservice-based applications or serverless applications, um, in many ways for web applications or for mobile applications. Really key use case for how we see this push forward. And then finally, teams start to leverage these technologies in their most advanced applications especially where they want to start taking advantage of things like machine learning. In the case of Lambda, you might see a full-blown SageMaker um, modeling environment that, that we've built that leverages, Lambda, uh, that, that leverages Lambda in the way you basically build it. Or for customers in the container space, they might be using PyTorch or Kubeflow and really taking advantage of the whole movement around machine learning and containerized applications in the market. So, now you can see that we span the gambit when it comes to types of workloads customers are doing with containers and serverless. What's right for you? So let's start with the highest level of abstraction and go deeper into AWS Lambda and the serverless and, and your serverless strategy. And as Andy puts it, Lambda is basically the compression algorithm for everything we have learned at Amazon across the years, packaged up and simplified for our customers. So yeah, the compression algorithm is experience, and that experience means that these decades that Amazon has been in business all compressed down into a simple, easy package that enables you to start innovating today. 
Lambda is the lambda is the maximum level of abstraction, meaning you don't have to think about the underlying infrastructure. As a result, it enables you, your you, you your developers to move the fastest. With Lambda, you only need to write code for business logic. When customers have teams that can focus on code, it's very easy to see that Lambda is the choice. It's also very clear that if you're working on a, on, a, on a new application, something that is not tied to an existing space or an existing application that you have, Lambda is a great way to start and one of the fastest ways for you to get to market. But the reality is it depends on where you are today. While these Lambda benefits are so clear, sometimes an organization might have standardized on other tooling or other packaging um, motions or have experience with containers already. And if that's the case, Lambda might not be the best solution for you. We, all, we often talk about Lambda being serverless, but serverless means different things to different people. So here's what serverless means at AWS. No infrastructure provision. I think I've said that multiple times, but the fact is when you take infrastructure provisioning away, you're just going to move faster. It automatically scales by unit of consumption. What that means is you literally pay only for what you use. There's no over provisioning. There is no capacity management. It literally is pay for use. Right? And that pay for billing model, uh, for value billing model, which is really important with, when you have applications that are scaling up and down, is so critical to managing costs within your infrastructure environments. And that built-in availability and fault tolerance that you get from a system that is always ready uh, to, to, uh, to, to react to the task at hand or to the excuse me, to the job at hand means that you don't even have to architect for availability. It's already built in. So when we say serverless, we mean it's the removal of that un undifferentiated heavy lifting that is server operations. This is an important distinction for customers because it allows customers to focus on building the application rather than managing your, your infrastructure operations. This helps you innovate faster. But getting more specific, what is Lambda? Ultimately, as I mentioned before, it, it's an event-driven compute service. To understand Lambda, you need to understand what do we mean when we say event-driven? In the easiest of terms, in the simplest of terms, it, an event is just a signal that's you know, that a system state has changed. In most modern systems, this is represented as a JSON message that provides some set of facts about what has changed, potentially what the current state of the system is, and what action needs to be taken to complete the job. When I think about it, since I'm the marketing guy, right, I have to kind of, you know, think of Lambda as, as a light bulb, right? A function itself is asleep. It's in the dark until it's absolutely needed. Now, the unique thing about Lambda is there's no light switch. It's an automated sensor. So when I walk in the room, the light bulb turns on. I didn't have to do anything. We've removed my actions from the infrastructure. I've just, I've just entered the room. When I leave the room, the sensor recognizes that I've walked away, the light bulb turns down. And you can see that uh, that optimizes not only for, for the use or the use case, but it also optimizes for the over, overall cost. That to me is the easiest way to think about what an event trigger or what Lambda actually represents for customers. But it's technical as well, and there are some things to be thinking about. So why does this matter? Why do we feel so strongly about the benefits of event-driven design? Ultimately, it's because you can improve reliability uh, and scalability. Events are asynchronous. You don't need to wait for a response to move to the next step. This improves resiliency and reduces dependencies within your, within your system. The tools of event-driven architectures are routers that abstract producers and consumers from each other. Remember, me from the light switch and the light bulb. The actions happen based on the environment, but it's not that these things are so tightly coupled that they can't happen. So event routers at AWS include things like EventBridge and SNS. These are ways to essentially Trans transfer and communicate these events that are happening within your application. And these event stores, they, they act as buffers. They hold on to events until the, the consumer is ready to use them. So at AWS, things like SQS is our serverless event store or Q. Amazon MQ is another Q and it uses standard APIs and protocols that help your developers build serverless applications quickly.
Now, a great example with uh, of a customer using an event-driven design is Lego, and I'm somewhat partial to Lego, given the fact that uh, I'm Danish and I grew up with this stuff. I grew up with Legos when Legos were not cool, when Legos didn't even make it to to, uh, to the states where we are today. Um, and the reality is, we've seen just this tremendous growth in their business. And it's as you can imagine, Legos and kids and Christmas, these things all go together. Well, back in 2017, Lego had their monolithic web app um, uh, in, in place to really you know, sell everything they have and create unique experiences for the customers. But Black Friday hit and the entire system came crashing down. Um, that set into uh, effect a, a significant re-architecting of their system. And they, they effectively began to decouple that back end and built an event-driven front end that enabled their applications to scale with the demand of customers. They launched this back in 2019. And the architecture you see here is their new hub and spoke design that you know ultimately is a much simpler way for them to operate events rather than using point-to-point -point connections and managing capacity and building building out data centers as they head into Black Friday. And note, as we talked earlier about integrations as being a, an essential thing to leveraging Lambda, here you can see how Lego uses EventBridge to act as that central hub for all of the Lambda function and the functions that are happening inside of their system. But it's not always pre about preparing for you know, un unrecognized scale or un unexpected scale. It's also about moving quickly. I've mentioned this a number of times with regards to um, uh, microservices architectures or, or, or uh, cloud native compute architectures. It's not just about building a smarter platform to solve for things like Black Friday. Lambda is a platform for super fast innovation and it enables you the customer to react to changing market or customer dynamics quickly. Um, the, the, the most interesting thing that I saw uh, here in the last year when COVID hit was Coca-Cola. They were presented with an opportunity to innovate a no touch drinking dispense uh, drinking experience um, to go to go along with their freestyle drink dispensers. And if you've been into a, you know, a, many of these fast food restaurant chains, what you've seen is we, we've gone to this mode where you have a very interactive digital screen that enables you to select the beverage that you have. But as they wanted to provide a touchless experience given the new market dynamics, Coca-Cola developers, they came up with this idea of effectively tying this dispenser to your mobile app, to your mobile phone and building an app so you could be completely touchless in your drink dispensing, um, uh, in your drink dispensing experience. Now, what does that mean? Well, that actually means that Coca-Cola innovated an entirely new experience based on real market, uh, real market dynamics, COVID, and they were able to get from idea to execution in less than 100 days because they only had to focus on the code, not the infrastructure that helped them to deliver this stuff. And now over 30,000 machines across the globe have this touchless capability. It enabled Coca-Cola to think and react quickly and innovate to change the experiences for their customers. Now, one thing to note, and this is, you know, goes back to the fact Lambda being that compression algorithm for experience. But with Lambda, you get not only all that we've learned at Amazon or even at AWS as we built our systems, but we also are focusing on making it easier for your developers. And so one of the things that we launched here at the past reInvent was the ability to enable our customers with one set of tooling and training for the first part of their software lifecycle. This is effectively taking advantage of the fact that people are using both serverless and container capabilities and want to have consistent packaging between uh, uh, consistent packaging for their developers. So the goal here is simple. We want customers to get the full benefit of their investment in container tooling for building and packaging software while also getting the full benefit of Lambda's 140 plus native service integrations. That simple programming model that we talked about today and you know, ultimately get that pay-per-use billing model that helps them uh, you know, manage the overall budget as you get into a world with, of automated, uh, automatic scaling up and scaling down to meet your business needs. But it's not as simple as supporting just a container package format. Along with launching support for OCI images, 
We've also added support for up to 10 gig package sizes, support large container, container images, and we've actually integrated things that enable you to gain access to machine learning models. We've open sourced the base image for our operation. We've open sourced the base image for our supported language runtimes. And you're welcome to start from your own or from a community based image. Again, this helps you move faster. Now, while we're on that topic of containers, let's switch gears a little bit. You clearly can see a lot of the benefits that come from, from Lambda, and I think I've probably overemphasized speed, cost, and, and opportunity. But let's talk about containers, because you know, at the end of the day, this has become the fastest growing application model in the enterprise. Now, why is that? Why do customers choose containers? Realistically, containers represent the majority of all net new applications being built and deployed today. Two thirds of the industry's containers they're already running on AWS because we give customers choice. Many customers simply like containers for their portability or for that smaller scale, but others also have a strong open source preference, and that's what leads them to things like Kubernetes, which is a huge open source initiative around cloud native computing platforms. And then other customers, they just have business requirements when it comes down to managing infrastructure. And for these customers, both ECS and EKS fit in their specific environments. So when you're thinking about containers, the first thing you need to think about is where to run them. I talked about the fact that one of the reasons why customers like containers is that portability. And the reality is many customers have good reasons to run containers outside of the core AWS platform. And so it's really interesting to think or really important to think about what does that mean in your environment? In many cases, you want to be able to run the same environment and the same experience and have consistency from your data center into your cloud, into your edge, and all the way down to the device. So effectively, what I'm saying is data center to device, consistency in tooling and experience in operations, et cetera. And that's core to our strategy for how we think about containers at AWS, right? This enables you to take advantage of this small, easy, portable application package with all of the benefits of you know, not owning the operations and extend it to what your business needs, meaning we can meet you where you are. Um, and that's not just inside of AWS Cloud. We have that ability to give you the same tooling in your data centers all the way out to your customer environments. Um, and even now, as of, um, as of reInvent, you, can, you, you don't even need Amazon infrastructure to run it on. We can run it on your own self-managed infrastructure, which is super important and a first in the industry to give that consistent tooling and experience and operational model for customers. So you have options when it comes to that container orchestrator. And, you know, I've, I've thrown out terms like EKS and ECS or Kubernetes and Docker. The reality is once customers have provisioned infrastructure, they'll need an orchestrator to provision and manage their container and their containerized applications. We believe two is better than zero and customers have many different preferences. If you want to go all in on AWS, ECS. The, the um, uh, Elastic Container Service is a great option, simplifying many decisions with an opinion set, opinionated set of automations. But if you want that open source flexibility and bring that entire ecosystem of tools into your environment, our Elastic Kubernetes Service brings Kubernetes to AWS with that simplicity, easier management, and scale. Most of our customers use both. The last thing I want to talk about in, in, in this container thing is you also have the option of gaining a lot of the benefits we talked about with regards to a serverless environment. No servers to manage, paying only for resources you need, eliminating that capacity management um, challenge. All of that can be applied to both EKS and ECS using AWS Fargate, which is effectively our serverless engine for our container environments. So we've talked about the modernization of infrastructure. 
Um, this past reInvent, we, we introduced a service to help modernize your developer and operations team because, again, it's more than just the application. You have to modernize your entire life cycle of development, deployment, and management of applications. And so what we announced at reInvent is actually an industry first. We're combining the concept of, of, of infrastructure as, as, as code, so an infrastructure pipeline, with classic DevOps constructs like CICD and effectively creating the first fully managed deployment service for containers and serverless applications. This is AWS Proton. And ultimately what it helps you do is bring together your developer and your operations teams with tools that provide consistency, right, um, and efficiency and best practices for how you manage your deployments and how you enable your developers to move faster. Really, really interesting stuff that helps you effectively move faster within your development teams with the compliance and the governance that you traditionally need inside of a, inside of a normal IT organization. And it's not just about code pipelines and infrastructure pipelines and, and container orchestrators and serverless. It also takes into consideration, or you must also take into consideration all of the things that play into your cloud native journey. Things like image repository, networking capabilities, mesh networking, um, uh, integration services, as well as a broad ecosystem of, of um, various vendors that help you move faster. And at AWS, we really have you covered. Whether it is those event integrations or mesh networking, it's all natively integrated into the system. And if you do want to use those other tools from the ecosystem, we have those as well. We have plenty of third-party um, tooling options, including new ones like Grafana for analytics or Datadog for monitoring and security, and many, many more that aren't on this slide. I called out at the beginning, uh, and I'm going to come back to it now, that most of the time the decision on compute isn't really an or, it's an and, because no customer has one single need. And T-Mobile is a great example of a customer that is taking that approach of serverless and containers while leveraging a broad ecosystem and in fact creating an ecosystem of their own that helps them deliver better value to their customers. They built a serverless developer platform and, that they, and they use Lambda for a lot of their customer facing apps. This Jazz platform helps them deliver new experiences to their customers as well as creates an environment to let other developers create apps quickly, creating a unique experience for T-Mobile customers. They also use Kubernetes and they're always on applications. So there's no question that when you're using T-Mobile systems, you might be on Lambda, you might be on containers. The experience is seamless and you know that the availability and the reliability of the system is there. And the results for T-Mobile, they speak for themselves. They've grown an NPS and customer base with a strategy that enabled them to use the right tool for the job, enabled them to move faster and out-innovate their competitors in the market and really leverage the innovation that they have within their developer base. It's a pretty cool story. I hope you'll start today. I hope this has inspired you to get, to, to get moving. And there are some things you can do to, to, to get started with either serverless or containers if you haven't already. Training or try a workshop. Many of these are free. Run a game day or participate in an immersion day or a deep dive into the technology with your SA or your account rep. We've got a number of training and certification um, uh, tools available to you to instantly get started. And the reality is when you're ready to get started, pick a small project for containers or Lambda and see how quickly you can move and test the results. Ultimately, these things are about smaller investments and moving faster. That simplicity means pick a project where you think you can make a difference in your overall modernization journey. And finally, when you're ready to go big, consider getting some help. We've seen that 84% of migrations and modernizations that are on plan involve a partner, right? 50% of the customers that do these on their own, they get stalled in a big way. So our recommendation is to leverage that partner ecosystem we have, whether it's through our, our Amazon managed services, our professional services organization, or our broad network of resellers and integrators like Eagle Dream and Slalom and Accenture that help you ultimately move faster and become that innovator that you're trying to go become. Thank you so much for your time. Please reach out to us with uh, 
any questions that you might have. We're always here to, to engage with you on this journey. We've had a lot of fun with our customers and we look forward to doing that with you. Reminder, please complete the survey at the end of this to help us get better. Thank you.